Hey everyone, Jamie here from technicalcafe.com. Welcome to your 18th HTML tutorial. In the last couple tutorials, we talked about creating HTML forms uh, and how we can use them to send data from one page to another, maybe to be processed by PHP or uh, ASP or some other type of scripting language. Um, and we also talked about what we can use to make up the tables, uh, such as text inputs, password inputs, uh, radio buttons, drop down menus, uh, check boxes, stuff like that. So in this tutorial, we're going to be switching gears a little bit to uh, actually HTML tables and uh, how we can go about using them, what they're used for, and uh, how to make them in HTML. So uh, right here, you'll notice I have actually two examples of tables. I have a uh, regular table just displaying the rows and columns. Um, and then I have a table with food prices and costs and stuff like that. Um, so the first table is a table that's 3x3. Three three. Uh, actually, both of them are 3x3, three three, uh, meaning three rows and three columns. Um, so in this table, I just inserted the data to be uh, row 1, column 1, row 1, column 2, row 1, column 3, etc, etc. Um, and basically, uh, tables are similar to forms in that they have an opening tag and, an op and a closing tag, and then they have different elements um, to make up the actual rows and columns. So it's, uh, it's kind of, you can kind of think of it like forms or maybe lists where you have a tag denoting what it is and then uh, tags in between just to define certain things within the tables, in this case rows and columns. So uh, this table right here is just an example of what a table looks like and uh, how to visualize the different rows and columns because that might be important when we're writing our code. So here's just an example of how we can go about using a table. I'm sure there's uh, you can think of a bunch of different ways of how, how to do this, but uh, I just did a food list and how much each food would cost and uh, how much food you might need. It's kind of like a shopping list. So I did bread, milk, and cereal and included the prices and quantities of those. So uh, let's take a look at the code here and see what the tables actually look like in HTML. All right, so you'll notice here that this is actually right here, uh, the code for the first table. Uh, and as you can see, it has a table opening tag and a table closing tag. Um, and you'll notice that we have our table row tag here, tr, and a closing tr tag. And then our table columns, um, they're actually called td, not tc, like you would expect. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but that's the way it is. And now uh, those are in in within the table row tags. So that's uh, just something to take note of here. And uh, I had did that three times because we have three rows, each with three columns. So uh, that's how I'd go about doing that. And for the second one, instead of just including the row and column name, I just included the food and food price and quantity. So uh, that's how we can go about making those up here. So same idea. Um, let's just uh, get started. So we'll create our basic HTML outline here. And we'll include our head. And within that, our title. I'm going to call this HTML tables. And we'll save and come over to Firefox and refresh. So you'll notice that everything's blank except for our title up here. Now that's good, so let's just keep going here. So we'll create our body. And we'll close the body out. All right, so uh, for the first table we're going to be creating, it's just going to be a regular table. Uh, and I'm just going to we're just going to work on how to put in the rows and column number uh, just to get familiar how you go about making up rows and columns in HTML. Um, not so much for looking at the table and deciding what row is what because I'm sure that's pretty uh, pretty simple. So uh, we're just going to create some text here and say table. And uh, we'll save that, come over here and take a look. And here's our table text. And then we'll come over here and we'll actually make the table. So if you remember, tables are made up of opening and closing tags similar to a form or a or a list, so we can say table for the opening tag and table for the closing tag. So uh, anything between these two tags here is going to be where we're going to put our table data, such as our rows and columns, and uh, anything that's going to be inserted into those rows and columns. So uh, we'll save that, take a look over here, and you'll notice that there is no table because um, we haven't actually included the rows and columns yet. So uh, let's go back into our code here and start writing some of those. Um, one thing that I want I want to point out is it's probably a good idea to indent your code so you have your table and within here you'll have like a row and column and then you'll have another and then another just so that it's easier to tell it apart from the table um, and it's just uh, it's easier to read for human readers not so much the browser because the browser is going to interpret it the same way so uh, it's just a just a good thing to practice to get into especially in other languages too where that's uh it's kind of necessary to do that but anyway uh, let's get into it so we'll indent here and we'll, the first thing we're going to create is a new table row. So we'll say tr and we'll close off the tr and that makes a table row here and if we save this, come over and refresh, you'll still notice that there's nothing here 
uh, even if we highlight there's nothing. And that's because we got to start writing more table rows and columns. And then we got to insert some data into those. So let's just create another table row here. Or actually, within the table rows, rather, we're going to start creating some table columns. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to indent again, and we're going to start creating columns. So it's kind of kind of create the rows first, and then you're going to create the columns within the row. So we'll say uh, TD for table column. Uh, remember, it's not TC or what you would expect. I'm not sure why exactly that is again, but uh, it's just the way it is. So we'll save this, and we'll come over here to our table, and we'll refresh. And you'll still notice that there's no table. So the code's there, but nothing's there. So, uh, and the reason for that is is because we haven't actually put anything in the table. So uh, right now we're in row one, column one. So let's just include that here, row one, column one. So uh, remember that we have our row here, our table here, and within the table is the ro are the rows and the columns. So uh, columns go within the rows. So it's row one, column one right here. So it might sound confusing at first, but once you start writing the table, it gets kind of easier and easier. So we'll save this, come over here and refresh. And you'll notice that now we have our row one, column one. So let's add a second column next to that. Uh, we'll come over here. We'll say TD and then close off our TD. So everything within the table basically has to have closed opening and closing tags. Uh, so we'll say row one, column two. We'll save this, come over here and refresh. And here's our row one, column two. Uh, and actually, if you highlight it, you'll notice that there's a nice space between the two. Um, but there's no border yet, and I'll show you how to add that in a second. So uh, let's come back here, and we'll add row 1, column 3. So we'll save this, come over here and refresh. And now you'll notice that we have our row 1, column 1, row 2, column 1, and row 3, column 1. And they're all evenly spaced out, uh, and the space doesn't get highlighted. So uh, let's just add one more row, and then I'll teach you how to make a border. So we have we'll say TR for a new table row and then TR to close it off and uh, so you gotta remember that when you're creating a new table rows you should close off the previous one uh, otherwise everything will just be contained and you might start accidentally nesting tables or something like that um, so just keep in mind to try to keep everything uh, closed off so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna tab in to create another space and we'll create the second row in column so first this is row 2 column 1 and we'll save, come over here and take a look. And it is the second row, the first column. So we'll just come back and we'll create another one. So every TD that we add adds another column onto the whatever row we're in. So basically it's just row first. So this is the second row. So every TD that we add within here is going to stay within the second row. It's just going to bump on another column at the end. So what we're going to do here is row two, column two, and we'll add our last column. We're only going to make this a 3x3 three three table. So we'll say row 2, column 3. So we'll save, come over and refresh, and here's our uh, table. The data kind of looks a little jumbled because there's no border yet. Um, so let's go ahead now and add that in. So similar to how you'd add a border on uh, other things, uh, we can go about adding a border on our table. So we'll say table border equals. So we're going to add a border attribute within the table tag or a table element. Uh, and so this is similar to changing the font color or changing a font size or something like that. Uh, same idea, just a little bit different. So we'll come over here and we'll say table border equals and uh, we're going to say one pixel, so one px. We'll save that, come over here to our table and we'll refresh. And now you notice that our data is nice and uh, spaced out and you can see the border between it so you don't have any confusion as to what's in what row and what, what column. So we can actually increase the border to, let's say, 10 pixels. But you'll notice uh, it doesn't really happen on the inside, it's only on the outside. And it's uh, it's kind of, I don't know, I don't think it looks too great. So let's go back and put it to one pixel. We'll save it, come over here and refresh. So this is our table. Um, so let's just add on our third row here. So we'll say TR, make sure we do it outside of our our uh, pre-existing uh, table rows and we'll indent in and we'll say TD TD we'll pre-make some of these to make things a little faster okay so here's our third row column one two three so remember it's row then column so third row column one column two column three so this is we'll say row three 
column one, row three, column two, row three, column three. So we'll save that, come over here, and uh, here's our completed table, the three by three table. Um, so it's a row one, two, and three, and then column one, two, and three. Um, so, oh, it was actually a spelling error right there. So uh, this is basically how you go about creating a table. It can be pretty useful for a variety of different things. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change a couple more attributes of the table, such as the uh, table background, and we'll also create uh, a different table. We'll put some text in the table, um, and we'll change how the text looks, just to give you a better idea of how tables uh, work and how you can use them. So this is basically how to set up a basic table. I might want to space some of these out a little more. Um, so remember, we have our table rows, and within the rows are the columns. So you can have as many columns as you want. We can add a bunch more if, if that's what you want to do. Now, my tables are just kind of useful for uh, storing data, representing data, stuff like that. So uh, if you like this tutorial, please feel free to subscribe. Um, also, please feel free to follow Technical Cafe on Twitter at twitter.com slash technicalcafe. Um, I'm on Twitter at twitter.com slash jamiemcg if you're interested in what I'm up to. Um, and also, please feel free to check out the Technical Cafe uh, blog where we have tech news, tips, tricks, stuff like that. Um, so thank you for watching and have a great day.